Hello and welcome, my name is David and this is the channel where I do tech stuff. Now about two weeks ago I built a system around the 3770K, the i7 Intel CPU that's about five or six years old at this point. Now I've been benchmarking it recently and it's been performing really well, but what I want to know is with the release of the Ryzen 5 2600, is it still worth it buying a 3770K in 2018? So I'm going to do a quick breakdown of the components that I have in the system for the 3770K build, but I would strongly recommend going to check out the build log. I'll have it linked in the description below and it'll pop up somewhere over here. But anyway, in here we have a 3770K, obviously, because that's what the whole video is about. It's being cooled by a Hyper 212X. I've got 16 gigs of HyperX memory in there. It is DDR3, so it's a bit older, but it's running at 1860 speed so it's not too bad as far as a graphics card goes I've got a GTX 1070 Ti and this is quite a powerful CPU to be pairing with a five-year-old CPU but I did get it for a very good deal and yeah I just thought it would it would bump up the power of this system weirdly enough actually right after I did that build video there's actually been a bunch of reviews popping up around the place of the Galax card that I've been using in that system um, but yeah it's a really great card it does get a little bit hot when you overclock it though as far as storage goes I've got a kind of basically no-name brand 240 gig SSD now one of the components that I enjoyed most of all while building this PC is the case it's the fractal design meshify C which as you can see it's pretty tiny but it's really great now before I head on to the benchmarks what I decided to do was not post them in isolation I wanted to give you some form of context of how it compares to a modern system that costs significantly more money so here is my day-to-day -day gaming and productivity build. It's got an AMD Ryzen 7 1700X in it, which has been overclocked to 3.95 gigahertz. That's quite a bit slower than the 4.5 gigahertz overclock on the 3770K, but it's got twice the core count, so that should hopefully make up for it. Graphics card wise, it's got a GTX 1080 in it, which I do realize is a more powerful graphics card than the 1070 Ti, but they do perform fairly similarly. And the graphics card is overclocked. It's sitting at 2100 megahertz on the core clock, as opposed to the 1948 that I have on the core of the 1070 Ti. And the memory is overclocked to 5.7 gigahertz, which is quite a lot higher than the memory on the 1070 Ti. And this is one of the parts where I think the graphics cards are differentiated because the GDDR5 on the 1070 Ti doesn't overclock very well. You can only get like a plus 150 or a plus 200 um, on the actual memory core offset. Whereas with this, you can get a plus 800 and it's still stable. I do realize that it does have GDDR5X in it as opposed to normal GDDR5. But yeah, we'll see in the benchmarks how these two systems compare. Now I do realize again, that this system is, is water-cooled as opposed to the air cooling and fairly rudimentary air cooling on the other system. But the overclocks that I have running on this system is very similar to the overclocks that I was running. In fact, it's the same overclock I was running with the system with the same air cooler on the CPU and the GPU air cooled. So there shouldn't be much of an advantage except for the fact that this is going to be running at half the temperature than the other system. Anyways, let's get into the gaming benchmarks.
Now having looked at the gaming benchmarks, it's actually really impressive because this system costs significantly less than the AMD one and its graphics card is less powerful. But in most 1080p situations, it actually outperforms the AMD system. At 4K, it's a bit of a different story, but there isn't a huge gap between them, except when you're looking at Rise of the Tomb Raider, which yeah, it, it, it really makes use of the extra power in the GTX 1080 as opposed to the 1070 Ti. Now, I also want to have a look at productivity benchmarks, but this is pretty pointless because honestly, there's no way the four core eight thread system is going to get anywhere near to the Ryzen 7. And well, it clearly doesn't. So this first benchmark is Cinebench and it scored pretty much half the score, um, Yeah, which isn't great for multi-threaded performance. But then I decided to have a look at um, Adobe Premiere Pro export times because that's one of the things that people were always going on about how badly optimized Adobe was for extra cores and it meant that because of the higher clock speed of Intel CPUs you get way better performance when it comes to actually exporting even though the CPUs have lower core counts. I think Adobe might have been doing something during their updates because there's a really big difference. Again, the render time dropped substantially. Now, what I did is I was using 1080p footage that I upscaled to 4K um, at a fairly decent bitrate. It was only a minute video, um, but yeah, it was way quicker on the AMD system. And I actually was quite surprised by that. And that made me think that What's the point? I'm not going to do any more productivity benchmarks because if you're looking at productivity, there's absolutely no point getting the Intel system because yeah, getting something like a 2600 will be way better value. And that very neatly brings me to the most important question around buying a 3770K in 2018. And that's the value proposition. Because anybody with a fairly big budget isn't going to be buying a five-year-old CPU. This is for somebody who wants to get really good performance from a PC, but for like bargain basement prices. The thing is with the 3770K is you can find it on eBay for about $150 and you might be able to get a better deal on it if you look in the classifieds in your area. Now this is quite cheap for a, for a CPU that has similar performance to something like the 7700K. And I actually think as far as a gaming chip goes, it was very good value. The reason that it only was very good value is because of the Ryzen 2 CPUs that have recently been released. Most importantly, the 2600, which is a pretty powerful CPU. It's got two more cores, four more threads, and the gaming performance gap has closed quite a bit in this current generation of Ryzen CPUs. When we were looking at the 1600X compared to the 3770K, it was easier to recommend the 3770K for gaming because there was a much bigger performance difference. But now with Ryzen 2, 2600 is a great gaming CPU and then you have the benefit of an absolutely devastating the 3770K in productivity. Not even devastating, it's gonna humiliate it. It's like, it's a whole different world when it comes to productivity. And another thing that the Ryzen CPUs have on its side is the fact that you can get really cheap AMD motherboards. You can get B350 boards from like 60 bucks and then you've got more modern features than the 3770K. So you can get like an M.2 drive and all kinds of fancy other stuff in it that you're not gonna get with a Z77 board. And the problem with the Z77 boards is they cost quite a lot of money. Uh, you're looking at at least $100 for a fairly decent condition one and that's a lot of money. The thing is though, they're fairly decently spec. You've got a lot of USB 3 ports, you've got pretty decent IO, uh, but you're not going to be able to get M.2, you're not going to be able to get a lot of stuff that you have with newer motherboards, which is a bit disappointing, especially at the higher price. So you're getting a cheaper motherboard for your Ryzen 5 and it's going to be brand new componentry. It's not going to be a CPU that somebody's been questionably treating for the last five years. Okay, so to summarize all of what I just said, unfortunately, the 3770K isn't as good value as it was two or three weeks ago. It, it, two or three weeks ago, I kind of would have recommended buying one. I would have said that it's a worthwhile thing to go for. But at this point with the current Ryzen CPUs, there's just not much of a point. Especially if you do anything other than gaming, you're gonna be getting a huge advantage by just spending $50 more on the Ryzen CPU. And if you're streaming, which is basically just gaming, also the 2600 is absolutely gonna 
decimate the 3770K because those two cores will make a pretty big difference. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you do like the video, do like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share the video with your friends. Until the next video, bye-bye.